Hey, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Effort of Community Church weekly podcast, a conversation with our pastors and leaders meant to continue encouraging you to know God, know freedom, know purpose, and make a difference. Hey, friends of Effort of Community Church, it is so good to be with you, lead pastor Kevin and me here, Jim, uh, so happy to be chatting about what is going on at Effort of Community. If you drive by the church, You'll find in our billboard out front, it flipping between two things, Healing Seminar and Entrusted Series. We had one of those fun weekends where both were merged, right? (laughs) Uh, On Friday and Saturday, we had some time, particularly on Saturday, um, where Dr. Randy Clark was with us, and then we moved into a trusted. But tell us a little bit about Randy and his time with us. Yeah, it was really an honor to have uh, Randy with us this past weekend. Our history as a congregation goes back a long, long way Mm -hmm. with him. So all the way back into the late 1990s, of course, the influence of the Toronto Blessing happening during that time, mm-hmm. but then also uh, Randy's personal investment with us. And so we've been a partner of Global Awakening since about 2014, I think it yeah. is. But uh, now it's been a, kind of an official relationship, but our relationship with him personally goes way back to the That's 1990s. Right. He mentioned even this past weekend when he was here, hey, the first time I was here, I was in the barn. Like That's it was right. when we didn't have either one of the buildings that we had built and we were still running the barn as our home, mm-hmm. and that uh, was the first time that he was with us. Yeah, and it's beautiful whenever he's here. Now, I'm going to go off script for a minute. I want to talk just for a second about what it means for a large, independent, non-denominational church for us to enter into deliberate relationship with yeah. others. Because, you know, I've been a denominational leader. I've been <clears throat> part of a denomination. I have a lot of respect for that approach as well. But it relies on certain ways of relating and accountability yep. and responsibility and visioning. That's different than the way we do it. But yet I am so impressed here that we've chosen some deliberate relation- relationships that get to speak into our world yes. and yep. g- provide us covering. So in many ways... It's a much more relational way to approach to the accountability and the exactly. co-visioning. Even Mark DuPont's coming this week who has a history of relationship with us. But yeah, yeah speak, you know, I'm not asking you to speak to it, but I just no. want you to say I appreciate the deliberateness we approach those relationships yeah, with. Yeah, thank you. I think it's critically important. Yeah. I, I would not, I mean, we can't do the Christian life alone. Yeah. Whether you're an individual by yourself or whether you're even a congregation, it is just not meant to be lived alone. Mm-hmm. And what can happen to a congregation is we can be so come so focused that we don't have an objective perspective from the outside. So there's a lot of protection that's available to us simply by relating uh, outside of mm-hmm. ourselves. And so that deliberateness of the association of related churches based in yeah. Birmingham, Alabama, and what they, you know, evangelism, their evangelistic anointing, their desire to plant churches, just that grace that's mm-hmm. on them to do that is one relationship. And then global awakening, which is the work of the Holy Spirit and the expansion of the gospel uh, and the kingdom around the world mm-hmm. and what they bring to us, I think it's a great combination. Yeah, and HarvestNet, too. I think Harvest, that's yep. important to mention, too, yep. that HarvestNet... Uh, even though it grew out of us, it still was a voice to us. It's like yeah. our own internal prophet reminding <laughs> us, right, about the, the church and what God's doing in the world. It's going to be an it's exciting unique. week for that, too. Huh? Yeah, it's a unique um, relationship with HarvestNet because it's something that we resource and give into, but then we also receive so much back uh, from HarvestNet and uh, with that relationship. So that's one that's especially unique yeah, it is. in uh, who we are as Effort of Community Church. Yeah, and we're still discovering it. That's the beauty of yep. a relationship that's centered in a new season is, it, it, I love the scripture, like it's out of out of storehouses, new riches are coming, right? Something we've sown in into in the past and we're now yeah, getting exactly. to be a part of it. So I want to talk a little bit, Kevin, if I could, about the roles of encounters with God. Um, yeah. Like, for instance, there's nothing... we. We can't help but say that no matter what, whether you whatever you came for on Saturday, you had mm-hmm. an encounter with God. It could right. have been in worship. It could have been seeing other people getting blessed. It could have been that you actually were healed. Yeah. It could have been that the Spirit awoken um, a word in you that you've been carrying for a while. Whatever, there was something about this weekend. I even sensed it on Sunday. I was the service pastor. And even my own sense of normalcy of how a service flows... I, I got done to the service, and I was like, wow, there was something different in me. Uh, I'm <laughs> yeah, not saying yeah, good yeah. or bad, but it was <clears throat> definitely like, it felt like an encounter weekend across yep. the board, yep. even in the entrusted thing, the way we were bringing together that challenge at the end. Talk a little bit about encounter and the role we think it plays. Yeah, yeah and that's the uniqueness, really, of almost every weekend service that we have. And so there's a level of programming, if that's the way to put it, that goes into the weekend service mm-hmm. where we think about okay, here's what the message is about, here's the message notes, here's the songs that we're singing, here's the atmosphere with the building set and everything. Um, But then we hold all that very loosely because ultimately the goal is we want people to encounter the Lord. That's right. And so we have to be aware of what God's doing in the moment and in the room. 
And uh, as I mentioned to some others earlier today, uh, we, um, what I do personally, when I feel like God wants to impart something or really like write something on my heart, yeah. I sometimes will find music that communicates that mm-hmm. and just listen to it constantly. But I do exercise the discipline of memorizing Scripture yeah. uh, as a way of actually writing it on my heart. It gives me the opportunity of not just sitting down and reading the Bible, but also then when I'm traveling or I'm driving someplace or I'm walking someplace, it can be part of what's That's right. in my mind as yeah. well. And can I read the one that you've been meditating on? Yeah. By the way, I'm going to read it. Kevin actually has it memorized, but he, I don't want him to blow it publicly. <laughs> so I'm going to read it. Under stress in front of the camera. <laughs> totally. You know how that is. I remember that. I used to be in Bible quizzing, and I, I thought I had it all nailed. Then all of a sudden, the pressure, the lights in the hot seat yep. hit. Stress but does not help. I want to read to you the passage Kevin was reading. Reading dust this morning is one he's meditating on. Particularly, look for encounter in this, right? Um, Because there's a lot of neat things going on in this passage, but also Paul reminding us of something. Reading from 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 5. When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and with much trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. Yep. That's good stuff. It is. I think it's kind of funny that I can definitely relate to the fact that I don't come with lofty speech. (laughs) Some of it's easier to say, (laughs) like, like, okay, that's that's, certainly the Spirit at work. Yeah, (laughs) that's one thing where I've I've arrived at what Scripture says right there. I'm already there. (laughs) That's good stuff. But ultimately, you know, I recognize that um, I think, like, the congregation coming together on the weekend and singing is so incredibly important. Um, where we declare the goodness of God and the reality of God in song together. Yeah. It's so incredibly important. And then for the message. And, uh, you know, we live in a culture that emphasizes information yeah. and knowledge. Uh, and I'm not talking about experiential knowledge. I'm talking about, like, just knowing things. Like, there's so much information available to us. And to some degree... It comes to the point where that is uh, almost something that we worship, like just the fact that we have so much information, we can find anything on Google. But you know, information, while it's a tool to bring life change, information by itself does not bring life change. Yeah, that's right. But man, encounter does. It does. Yeah. And I recognize, like I've been, I've been a pastor for a long time, and I recognize that most of what I say even on a weekend service, is going to be forgotten. Like It'll yeah. impact people. It'll hopefully encourage yeah, I people. Get it. Yeah. Uh, but they're just, not going to be able to list your five best messages no, this year. they won't. Right. <laughs> but if we can create an environment where people encounter the Lord, yeah. like when, when God speaks directly to someone or there's a word of knowledge that comes and someone's in the, in the room right. saying, man, that's God speaking to me, those are things that are never taken from us. That's right. That's right. And it's life-changing. That's right. And one of the things I mentioned earlier was that... Um, a person with an experience with God is not subject to a person with an argument against God. That's right, man. So oh. we live in a world where you know there's a lot of secular humanism and people don't believe there is a God. But man, when you have an experience with Him, and you know, man, God knows me, That's He right. hears me, He loves me, He's ministered to me. Yeah. Um, no argument's going to shake that. Plus, plus yeah. uh, it is its own argument. Like I can't say much. I just know what I encountered. Yep. Uh, there's so many. Now, if you don't mind, I want to jump in because when Kevin was sharing this morning. Um, about this, this reminder that, hey, it's not that we don't care about the preaching of the Word. It's not that we don't care about the, the, this, the gifts in our mix, particularly the five-fold ministries, but we do know this, whatever is going on in those worlds, it's ultimately driving toward an encounter with God. Yes, that's and, right. I, and while he was talking, uh, I was reminded of Acts chapter 15. Come on, we all know this. This is the Jerusalem Council, yep. probably one of the biggest decisions ever made in the church oh of whether goodness. or not <laughs> to fully recognize the freedom that there is in Christ for all ethnicities and all genders, right? It's just such a wonderful, wonderful revelation. But we all know, in some ways, it was hard one because the church at Antioch, they start to see God moving among the Gentiles so much that they send Paul and Barnabas yeah. to Jerusalem to check with the, the core of the apostles, right? It made them and uncomfortable, that's for sure. Totally. And I just, first of all, I love that. We're going to be talking a lot about Antioch this week because it's the theme for H&I, but let me just stay on this theme where they send Paul and Barnabas 
to Jerusalem Council, and I love, if you look how it goes there, the first person to talk is always Peter, mm -hmm. right? And Peter talks about the vision that he got and his apostolic calling toward yeah. the Gentiles. Then I love the next verse. It says, it says this, the whole assembly became silent as they listened to Barnabas and Paul telling about the miraculous signs and wonder God had done among the Gentiles through them. And when they finished, James spoke up and quoted scriptures. I love that you have two apostles, James talking about scripture, yep. Peter talking about an apostolic vision he has. But isn't it interesting, you have Paul and Barnabas saying, can we just tell you about the encounters of the powerful yeah. encounters of God among them? Yeah. And that's when it says, and the assembly became silent. Because yeah. you can't speak against. Oh my I mean, we all can have different interpretations yep. of this scripture. We can all wonder whether or not Peter always nailed it as an individual and an apostle. But you got to sit and go, you can't deny some yeah. of those stories you and those can. encounters. Right. And yeah. I just love that Paul, who's probably the smartest guy in the room, decided not to use persuasive words. Yeah. There he says, I'm just going to tell you some stories. Yep. That's exactly wonderful. right. It's neat to think about. Uh, so Dr. Randy Clark was with us this past weekend. Mm -hmm. He is a significant academic. Yeah, I noticed. You know, when, you're yeah. Reading, when you're reading his books, I mean, he digs in, he digs deep, and even, uh, I think he's got 43 books. I think he re writes more books than I read. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> I guarantee that bad, you he writes more books than I read. <laughs> um, and so it's, it's all there. But even like looking at the pattern of what he did here when he was among us on Saturday night. That's right. So basically he got up there, told a few stories, and pretty much said, okay, let's read from Psalm 103. Mm -hmm. He heals all of our diseases. Do not forget his benefits. That's right. And so it was, okay, here's scripture. And then it said, okay, let me just show you the scope of what I've seen God do That's right. when it comes to healing all of our diseases. So we talked about... Dyslexia. Yeah. Dyslexia, way to go that. You, you way to model that. <laughs> uh, all the way to physical healing and emotional issues. All the way out to ALS. I mean, some. Yeah. yeah, he's talked about some healings where you're just like, man, yeah. you don't see the spirit. Well, the spirit might be moving, but we don't always. Yeah. yeah so I didn't it. notice the pattern until you mentioned that. So mm -hmm. here you have a substantial apostle simply saying, okay, here's some scriptural a reference to this. Let me tell you the stories That's of right. the scope of what we've seen God do. That's right. And so it's following the same pattern. As and, that. and I want to bring up a point because I always like to talk to whoever spoke the weekend and say, hey, here's something you reawakened my mind on this yeah. weekend. And the thing that this weekend hit me, and you, you've you been using it in bits and pieces the last few weeks, is this idea that we don't have to stir up faith. Yeah. That when we hear those stories, God's yeah. trying to just, create faith yeah. in us and give us faith. Yeah. Because I remember a couple months ago where you were on the faith topic and you were like, hey, this is not about something we've got to make happen. Mm. It's about saying yes to something God wants to give us. And yeah. I sensed that in the room. And we saw close to 100 confirmed, yeah. well, by individuals confirmed yep. in their own uh, sense of admitting they just had an experience happen in the yep. room. And you're like, wow, something's going on there. And it wasn't something we made happen. There wasn't a lot of any kind of pre-planning. There was It was like, yeah. is God going to give us the opportunity to, to, to grab hold of faith today, yeah. and he did. It was wonderful. And it's wonderful to think <clears throat> the danger that we have is working something up in the human flesh and yeah. human energy that ultimately not is, not, God is not doing. Yeah. And so the narrow road that we walk is we want to be alert to what God is doing and announce it and receive it from That's him. That's right but not push beyond the point where we're making something happen. That's right. So uh, we do have the faith of the Lord, faith of God. And, right. and faith is one of those spiritual gifts in the so, same way that we have a level of expectancy and we ask God, would you give us uh, increased faith? Mm -hmm. It is something he gives us. Yeah. And, as we acknowledge that, as we acknowledge what he's doing among us and even the work that he's doing, it just seems to build on on that one right after oh, the other. Oh, that's right. And it, it's, it, I want to tell you a testimony that happened for me is I was a service pastor on Sunday and a word of knowledge came through at the end about deafness, right? Mm -hmm. And um, a woman came up to me afterwards, not to be prayed for, but to tell me the story that three of her family members had come or, um, or, uh, on Saturday and they all struggle with some form of um, hearing loss. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were just, they, they, in their hearts, they were a bit disappointed that it wasn't one of the things that was highlighted. Of all the yeah. things that was highlighted <laughs> uh, on Saturday night, yeah. uh, he, hearing wasn't. And so uh, be, be, be simply because yeah. of the way we talked about it on Sunday morning, uh, I got an email back yesterday from that woman who recorded a prayer that we did for those three and gave it to them. And the testimony she got back from two of the three was this. It meant more to me because yes. I, I drove home saying, God, do you see me? And praise God for everyone else who got touched, but do you see me? They said that when they heard that that word came out Sunday morning, just knowing that it came out as a condition that God was wanting to move in was he yeah. was in emotionally yeah. healing for them, right? Because they said, I was driving home thinking, good for that, God, but I just 
love that God is so attentive to those details. Uh, yeah, God is truly amazing. Is <laughs> like, he not? I'm I mean, a fan. He, yeah, he's right. He is, he is amazing. But uh, it's amazing that, I mean, kind of the way I say this is everybody who gets healed of something dies of something else. Like, mm. ultimately, healing is not the goal. Healing yeah. is a sign. That's right. And God does transforming work in the lives of people by bringing some sort of encounter. And sometimes it's not even in specifically the healing, or even there was maybe a word of knowledge that actually spoke to a person's need. That's right. And even whether they've gotten healed or not, it's that God sees me. That's right. He Man, knows me. That was the testimony. He knows what, he's dealing, what I'm dealing with. Um, you know, I don't think any of us have a, an issue with recognizing God in the vastness of who he is. That's right. Created the universe, holds it together in his hands. Uh, our lives are de- our lives are dependent upon him. I I personally have no trouble with no, that. No. I don't think most people do. But then in the midst of that, the 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 reality that he is so big but so intimate, yeah. and to be able to see those together, that while he is so big, and he's got the whole world on his hands, that's right. That he knows me, that's right. And even knows me better than I know that's myself. Right. That's yeah. amazing. And and he's attentive. And even if he's not going to immediately change the thing you're challenging with, to be aware that he's in the boat. Yep. I sometimes love to remind us, right? Uh, the most beautiful thing that might have been able to happen when the disciples were out in that boat and Jesus yeah. was asleep in it is that they actually went to sleep with him in the boat. <laughs> you know, the storm right. still rages okay, sometimes, gonna, but you know Jesus is in yep. the boat, right? We're going to nap in the midst of the storm. We're going to take a great <laughs> nap. And so all that to say, I want to say thanks, Kevin. I want to highlight this week. You might have heard us allude earlier to the church at Antioch. It is a model that we as a church believe it is a perfect example of a local congregation who also know how to reach beyond itself regionally and nationally. So some of you have heard teachings that we do on this. Kevin yep. does a wonderful teaching, has inspired a lot of us. We HarvestNet has decided to do a deep dive, have multiple people coming in yep. to speak to that topic. So I think it's going to be a next level revelation for us be. into the church at Antioch, and I'm looking forward to this week. The way the week works is pretty straightforward. Afternoon sessions, those you have to register for, we encourage you to check out the speaker schedule online. Evening sessions are open for everyone to show up free of charge. Come and join us. We'd love to see you there. Yep. Hope to see you there, and thanks so much, for Jim, for inviting me to be part of the podcast. Oh, man, we love it. it. We love having you. All right, y'all, have a great week. See ya. Hey, thanks again for joining us today. We hope that you've been encouraged by listening and that you'll join us again next week. You can listen to previous episodes, find additional resources, and, of course, learn more about us by visiting effortacommunitychurch.com. Community